What is going on, folks? Welcome back once again to the madhouse and all the madness and insanity goes on 24-7. We're working on frets again today. Today we're going to uh, crown these frets and we're going to polish them and uh, go through all the steps of sandpaper and uh, I'm going to, of course, go over them with this. Happich Semichrome Polish. I've got videos about it. You can't beat this stuff. You can use it for everything. You need to check the video out on that. Not many of you watched it. This stuff works. It's miracle salve. I'm telling you. Cue balls here. Uh, promised you I'd give you a tip on these two crown files, okay? I got these files from Stumac. Now there you can see a medium. I think it's a medium. Yeah, medium. And this one is a narrow. Now, here's the tip. These, these are expensive files. When you order these from Stumac, you would think, you would think that, uh, you would think a medium one would be what you would need on 90% of the guitars you work on, right? Wouldn't you think that? If you go to their site and you see a medium one, and a narrow one. Wouldn't you think a medium one would be what you want to do most guitar frets? If you go there and you buy that medium one for that, you fucked up. You got the wrong file. It's uh, it's marketing strategy, folks. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. The way they have that set up, you buy the medium one, just like I did, and everyone else does. You get it and you realize this is for jumbo frets. It's way too big to do frets like this instrument here, or 90% of guitars. It's way too big. So uh, you come back and you get the one you need, which the next smaller one is narrow. And you can try, if you don't use this, Stumac will take it back and they'll send you one like this. But if you have touched it on frets, it's yours then, and you got to buy another one. And that's the whole marketing strategy they have. I think, I don't know this for sure, but pretty sure of it, considering the bloodthirsty folks they are. <laughs> but if you go, if you get one of these and you're just doing guitar, get the narrow. It works on mandolins, it works on banjos, it works on 90% of the guitars. If you have jumbo frets or, uh, say, I don't know, electric bass, that's where the medium comes in at. It's uh, it's really a low blow, I think, from Stumac to do folks like that. But that's the way it goes. You know, they assume, well, this person's already bought one. We have their money. They'll probably keep it and buy another one. And that's what most people do. And here I have two of them. So, uh, like I say, they are expensive. You can go in there yourself and look at the price. I'm not really sure what they are now, but I guarantee you they're like all the Stumac shit, way too high. So, uh, anyways, I need the narrow one right now. And I'm going to bring you, for your viewing pleasure, over here. And we'll go through this. i got to color the frets blue like before. And uh, I'll explain to you how I crown my frets. Well, these frets, they're not mine, but they don't belong to me. But uh, how I crown frets, I guess I should say. Hold on. So here we go. We're going to color all of the frets blue again, just like before. And there again, I don't, usually I don't tape up the entire fretboard, mummify it, or whatever you may dub it as. And they've got, it's got to be blue. You have to use blue because no other color will work. <laughs> now you can use whatever color you can see best. Red's a good color. Yellow's a good color. I just prefer blue. I, I Blue's my favorite color, so why not? Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, everything going in your favor. I won't bore you to death with this. I do want to uh, show you, though, why I'm coloring them blue once again. And will another time or two after this, I'm sure. Getting close to election time, folks. 
Who do you think is going to get it? Who do you think deserves it most? <laughs> man, oh man. What a mess. Now, a little more about this crowning file. It has, uh, it's two files in one. It should be a lot more than that for the price of it. That's 150 grit, this right here is, okay? That's what I'm going to be filing with. 150 grit will go over every fret. And then we color them all blue again, or red, or yellow, or green, or the color of your choice. And then you pull this baby out, turn it around, pop it back in, and it's 300 grit, fret, uh, 300 grit right now. It's diamond grit files. That's another reason they're so expensive. Start with the 150. I'll just change it. I want the 150. I can barely see it, but yeah, that's right. We know that our frets are completely flat. From the first one to the last one, they are flat city. Okay? Well, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a tiny, tiny, tiny line really thin across the top of that fret. I'm going to leave that little line on every fret. That assures me 100% that I have not taken away from our flatness or levelness. You know what I mean? It assures me 100% that every fret is still flat on top. Also, you have more, more uh, fret there. Cue balls uh, really distracting me right now. By leaving a flat spot on the top of the fret, okay, you're going to have more fret come in contact with the string when the string is touched on it. Having more fret like that makes the frets last longer. They don't wear out as fast because there's more of it. If you sharpen that fret up, if you, you know, this is exaggerating a whole lot, but to make the point, if you crown that fret until it's sharp on top, okay, say it's a, it peaks and it's sharp, well, it's going to wear faster when a string is pushed against it and the string vibrating. Whereas if you have that little tiny flat spot up there on top of the crown, then it's not going to wear out nearly as fast. And I always do my frets that way. I've done them that way for many, many years. And it's always worked for me. And it does not take very long with these files. This is where some guys get nervous and think that they should tape up the uh, tape up the entire fretboard I guess but if I did slip and make a scratch or a mark I can fix it and you'll never know the scratch or mark was over there. But usually I don't slip. I'm, you know it could happen I know but uh, you can't worry about things like that. You got to get the job done, you know what I mean? I want to sweep it off, come back, turn this thing around, color the frets blue again, and go at it with that 300 grit. And then we'll start into all of the sandpaper uh, grits. So I'll bring you back when I've made a little bit of progress. Hold on. Okay, I've already gone over it twice now with the 150 grit and then the 300 grit. And I don't know if a camera will get this. Maybe with these lenses I can actually show you this. You can see, you should be able to see, if, if you can see, if a camera picks it up, a very tiny slight line of blue left on the top of that crown, on the top of those crowns. It's just a tiny, minute little line of blue. But by doing that, you assure yourself that you've still you're still flat every fret is still flat we've not lost our flatness that we worked so hard to get and we're leaving a tiny flat spot on the top of every single crown so there's more fret will come in contact with the string and it will uh, last a lot longer so I wanted to show you that I should have swept that up first I'll sweep it up right now 800 grit, 1000 grit, 1200 grit, 1500 grit, all the way up to 2000 grit sandpaper out here. And, uh, well, wait right there just a minute. <laughs> like, where else would you wait? 
I'm going to start with the 800 grit paper here and get the little fret protector up here to do its job. Try to cut it to, you know, not any wider than that fret protector is so that way I don't get off on the on the fretboard. Don't touch it. And I'm just going to go over every fret like this with the 800 grit. And then switch it and go to the thousand, go over every fret, and switch to the uh, 1200 grit and go over. It takes a long time to go through all the, the uh, steps of sandpaper, but to get your frets to be perfect, you know, that's just what you got to do. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for your support, all of you, and those of you that went over to my uh, Patreon site, thank you so much. You know, Dave had a good idea, Dave's World of Fun Stuff, I know a lot of you all know of him, had a good idea about uh, raising, he's, he's got his goal set pretty high, I've only got mine set for a hundred bucks a month. Dave's got his way up there somewhere, but he had a good idea, I thought, about, you know, if, you, if I can get enough people to do mine, I'll do the same thing if you guys would be interested in doing that. Dave's idea was to for him to purchase a guitar that you guys, or me, say, let's say I will purchase, I will go out and buy an old beat-up guitar, not necessarily a cheap one, but a good one, actually, or, you know, a worthy one, and... If whatever you guys want, we'll vote on it. I'll go out and buy it. I'll fix it. And I will give it to one of you. Or we'll have a contest on the Patreon site. And I'll give it to one of you guys. You know, if my goals... I have, I'll have to... Obviously, I'll have to raise my goal to do that. I mean, a hundred bucks a month. I wouldn't be able to go buy very many instruments. You know what I mean? To do it with. But, uh... If you guys would be interested in something like that, hey, I'm all for it, man. I would, you know, tell me the kind of guitar you guys want me to buy. We'll vote on it or have a contest or something. Decide some way. I'll go out and find it and buy it. And I'll fix it. I'll set it up. You know, it could be a Martin D28 or a D45 or whatever you guys want. And when it's finished, give it to one of you guys. We have some kind of a contest or something to determine... Which one of you gets it? And it's yours for free. For a, a buck a month or five bucks a month or ten or twenty or whatever you pledge if you became one of my patrons. I think that's just a wicked good idea, man. Anyways, if you would ever like to do that, go to my Patreon site. Links are in the description below. Make a pledge, become a patron, and if enough of you do it and are interested in doing this, we'll get on it. I'll ra I, like I say, I'll have to raise my goals. 100 bucks a month isn't going to buy uh, very many instruments. I don't guess you can see shit. Oh, uh, there, maybe that's a little bit better. But, uh, y'all, yeah, man, you get to see my videos. <clears throat> one week to one month before they appear on YouTube and are ad free you shouldn't see any ads popping up in them from the Patreon site for me to go out and buy a guitar that you guys wanted me to buy fix it, set it all up do everything it needs done to it and have a contest here on, on Patreon and give it away You'd have to be a pa patron to, uh, you know, participate in something like that. And it's just a, an idea. Put in the comments if you think it's good or shit. I think it's a really good idea. Something you can do for your patrons. And like I say, I, I would have to raise my uh, my goal level from 100 bucks up enough to buy, you know, a decent guitar that needed work. Or maybe it doesn't need any work. Maybe I can just buy a new one. I will start all over again now with 1,000 grit, 
work every fret. Uh, come back with uh, 1200 and again with 1500 and again with 2000 and then we will give it this this wonderful miracle salve good stuff for what ails you I still gotta do the uh, fretboard I'm gonna treat it with linseed oil but I got the frets finished check that out man Yes, sir. I think the light's better down here. Uh, you're not going to see any scratches in those. All you're going to see is everything you're seeing there is something reflecting. <laughs> uh, you can see yourself in them. Let's see if I can get... I can hold the camera still. Yeah, that's reflections in there, my friends. If you pay someone to do your frets and they don't look like this when you get them back see that's a reflection see what I mean it looks like scratches but it's not there's no scratches here I didn't do anything to the ends of the frets that's the way they were they don't feel sharp or anything so uh, I'm, not even, I'm not even going to go over that but yeah man the lights better here check that out so I'm going to put linseed on them now, on the uh, fretboard, clean it up good. I'll bring you back and we'll uh, talk about everything we've done. Hold on. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about boiled linseed or unboiled. And how do you put it on? How do you apply it? Well, it doesn't matter if it's boiled or not boiled. If you can see around the cap where it has solidified, okay, can you see that? It's not going to collect dust. It's not going to... i just take a paper towel like this. Start rubbing it on. Uh, it's not going to collect dust like some people may lead you to believe. I rub it with the grain and across the grain. And, uh, you know, put it on there fairly heavy. It's going to go down in those cracks of an open grain wood and it's going to solidify in there. And it's going to protect that wood from the elements outside like uh, your skin oil and it will protect it for a good six months before it wears off so yeah just you know rub it on put it on uh, you know don't drip it on or let it run but put it on there you know pretty heavily and leave it for a few minutes five minutes three minutes maybe about three to five minutes and gently rub it off now this stuff is uh I've read a lot about it. Uh, they say it will spontaneously combust. If you just throw the rags in the trash, it can happen, they say. I've never had it happen to me ever, but then again, I always use paper towels like I'm using right now, and then when I'm finished, I run them under water, soak them in water, and throw them in the trash. And I've never had them spontaneously combust on me before, but, you know, it could happen right here in my hand, I guess. I guess it has happened. So you want to bear that in mind. Make sure you get up close to all the frets. Right up to the fret. I'm also going to put this on the bridge. I don't know what that bridge is made out of and I can't look right now but if it's rosewood this will do it a world of good or ebony either one. Now, there you go. Leave that three to five minutes and it just wipe it off. And like I say, what runs down in those cracks will solidify and it will protect the wood. It won't let any elements in and it will uh, hold in any oil that the wood might have, like rosewood. This is not rosewood, but rosewood's an oily wood anyway. And it'll kind of hold the uh, 
the oil in, you know, keep the, the wood from drying out. One last look. The, uh, that's a pretty chick right there, you know what I'm saying? That guy's a, got a good imagination, or he may have had a template, I don't know. But, uh, the linseed's not completely dried up yet, but you, know, you can see that horrendous reflections going on. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and gals. Hope it was entertaining for you as it was me. Think about the Patreon thing. Tell me what kind of guitar you want me to buy and fix and give to one of you guys for free. Or for five bucks a month or ten or one, whatever you want to pledge. You know, it's just a thought. Think about it. Cheers. I love you. What? What is it? I love you. Oh. I love you. Oh. Tell me. There you go, Victor. I love you. Are we off?